key thing to remember with sword fighting is that whenever you're blocking an attack, you always want to make sure that the exterior or the top of your arm is facing the sword. So if Joy attacks me and I block like this, I can throw her off that way. If she attacks me and I block her like this, she has more power over me, my wrist is weak, I can't push her back, and she could possibly chop off my head. See, look. Ah! Head chopped off. So, you want to block with a strong wrist. So, come at me. Yeah! Strong wrist! <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't ready for that. Okay. So footing. You want to be very spry on your feet, ready to go back and forward to the side, because you are in a fight. Anything can happen. So, what you want to do is you want to have the hand that you are attacking with, the same foot is going to be in front of you. And so you'll fight. Yeah, I fight you, I fight you, I fight you till the day. And so, that is the proper stance. Knees bent. Uh, feet can be anywhere from shoulder length to maybe even a little bit of a lunge apart. And be aggressive by control. Okay, so uh, we are going to pretend now that Joy has lost her sword and she is a vulnerable victim. I have my sword, so I'm going to kill her in two ways. First, I'm going to jab her in the stomach. Now, a good way of staging this is having profile from both parts. I'm going to come at her with sword in my right, left hand free, grab her shoulder, pull back, go in for the jab, let the sword come through, the audience loves that, and then bring him to the ground and pull the sword out before the audience can ever see that it went in somewhere. Ooh, that's a good idea, Joy. We will now do it backwards so you can see my hand. Here we go. Come, pull back, go to the side. Not actually stabbing her. I bring her to the ground and pull out my sword. Yay! <laughs> Second way. Need some help? I'll always help your victim up after the scene is over. Now, you don't want to do this one. I'm going to attack her neck. You're going to want to have this one with her facing back, the attacker facing the audience. You come up, you put your fist kind of like to their neck, and you're going to bring your sword across in a straight like manner. They're going to look this way as if they've just been punched that way. <coughs> and they will fall to the ground. <coughs> now it's important to make sure that they never reveal their neck to the audience or else you'll obviously see that there was no blood and no incision. But for learning purposes, we shall show you. Maybe this is the best idea. Okay. Well, I don't know how close we can get with her. So you go up, knuckle to neck, go across, throw them down. Throw down, Bobby Flay. What? <laughs> Ever seen that show? I have. Okay. To show you one last time, this is what it's going to look like. I hate you. <laughs> Off to my next victim. Now we're on to fisticuffs, fisticuffs, and we're going to show you how to punch first. Uh, a few terms. First, uh, napping is the sound that is made uh, when you punch somebody, but you're making that either on yourself or on the other person, you're not actually hurting the person. A punch without a sound isn't convincing, so you have to create a sound in order to convince the audience. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, and we are going to have three stages to every punch or slap or whatever we do that is like one person hurting another. Uh, you're going to have a cue, no, your show. Show the punch or the slap or whatever, uh, and that's just giving them the like recognition like, oh, it's about to come. You cue it, which is the drawback, and then you go for it, which is the third step. Okay, so we're gonna start with the punch, just like we had said, uh, or demonstrated. 
you're going to have your opposite foot in front of you, about shorter length apart. Uh, knees bent, very relaxed. You want to be very relaxed in this whole entire process. Getting tense is not good. So, we're going to show the punch, and then we're going to draw back the punch by cueing it. And then as you go across, you're going to punch yourself or hit yourself right in the chest to make the noise. What she's going to do is when she sees the punch coming, she is going to look that way because that's the natural punch progression. And she is going to think of something pleasurable over there, like chocolate. So she's going to be like, ooh, chocolate, like so that you can get the very quick reaction that you need from being hit by a punch. So all together, that looks like this. Show the punch, cue the punch, go. Now, to convince the audience, what you have to do is pivot them a little bit, and this is what it's gonna look like. Pretty convincing, right? So now we're gonna do a slap. Uh, slap is the same principle as a punch. Uh, this time, the nap is made by you hitting yourself, like high-fiving yourself, woo, good job, slap them. So what you're going to do is you're going to show the slap, cue the slap, go the slap. They're going to react. So this is what it looks like at the angle that you're probably going to perform it at. Good. <laughs> and there's that way, so you can like high five yourself. Uh, another way to do that, in case you're working with a one-armed person, is they will put their hand right underneath their chin at a nice, comfortable, relaxed position. And you're going to high five them. Yes. So you show, cue, and slap. And from this angle, it will look like this. I prefer high fiving myself because I know that I can control that better. Uh, but if you have somebody that would really like to do this because this is a lot more hidden, that was really poor English, I do believe. Uh, it, the audience can see this way less than this. So it's up to your actor's discretion. Yeah, and if you use your own hand, just be careful not to make it obvious. Hold it in front of their chest so that the audience can't see it. Angles, uh, you obviously don't want to do any of this punching and stuff in profile because they can see that there's space, they can see that there's a hand, they can see that there's another hand. So what you want to do is you always want to have them at an angle at which you can see the hand go back, get ready for the slap or the punch, because people in the audience like that, they're like, ah, oh, it's coming, it's coming. And then you go for it, and you want to have, make sure that they see the follow through too. So it's not just like, where's the fun in that? No drama, no like, the audience is like, whoa, what happened? Nothing. And your person getting hit needs to be careful to um, act as if they're suffering from a punch in the correct cheek because it looks really dumb. If he punches me or slaps me this way and I touch this cheek, you're bending this direction, but you got hit here. So be sure to make logical choices. Okay, okay so choking. Choking is pretty simple. Uh, the thing about choking is that the person being choked is the one in control. So what's going to happen is I, the choker, am going to come up behind, take them, and put them in the little nook of my elbow. See, I'm barely even touching her neck. I'm touching her like right here. I can feel her pulse and nothing more. So. What she's going to do is she's going to immediately grab onto my arm and she is going to show the distance between, or like she's going to determine the distance between my arm and her neck. This way she controls the uh, intensity and all that stuff. I'm not actually choking her. I'm very relaxed. She's doing all the work right now. All I have to do is just make sure that my elbow is moving. So, oh, I am choking you. I am fierce man, or I can be like, ah, war grave, ha ha. So that's how you choke someone. And they can get up on their tiptoes. You can take them down to the ground doing that. It's wonderful. What's a way to get out of a choke? Ooh, a way to get out of a choke. 
is if the person stands a little bit more uh, to their right, if they're using their right arm, or to their left, if they're using their left arm, it's like a tango now. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, the person who's being choked will pull out their right hand, make a fist, and they're going to do the three-step process of show, cue, and punch! Oh! And that's going to be more of a vocal uh, hit than a nap anywhere. Um, so that will just be vocalized more. So in reality, it's going to look like this. Ah, I hate you, I choked you. Oh! Look how convincing that was. And you can do it on the left as well. Ah! Oh! From the front. So if I'm being choked the front, What's going to happen is she's going to put her hands on my shoulders, like so. From the audience, it's going to look like it's around my neck. I immediately grab her arms, and I have control now. So I'm like... <gasps> See how I made it sound like I was choking? That's how you do it, folks. The most convincing choking sounds are the most entertaining for the audience, so practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you want to get out of this one, you're going to take your arm of preference, bring it up, over, and then that's going to be kind of like the show. The cue is going down, and then the punch is me elbowing her in the face. Yeah, it's kicking. So, your victim will be on the ground, Don't get too close to the cord. in the fetal position, like so. You're going to take your hands and protect yourself. And uh, the person who is kicking you is going to stomp on the ground in front of you. And the person on the ground is going to like that. This is what it looks like. And something for the kicker is the kick back demonstrate is very important so they understand yeah, what's right. happening. Because if you, if you just kick like this, um, it's not very realistic, and it's more, it reads better if you kick and then your foot kind of reacts itself. And if it's best for shoes or else you don't get a sound at all. Yeah. Okay. And so just to show you what it looks like, we'll demonstrate from the same one. Oh. Yay! Okay. So. Uh, the next move we're going to show you is uh, head to knee contact. And so what we're going to do is I, as the attacker, am going to take Joy by the head. I'm going to push her back just a little bit and then bring her and throw her past my knee. While I do that, I take my hands off of her and I slap myself on my knee and my thigh, as you can see. So, take her, I hate you! And she reacts appropriately. A lot of times I'll fall on the ground, which is good. Probably. Perhaps pass out entirely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, uh, positioning for that, you probably want to have either her positioned so that you don't see that, or me positioned this way so you see that. And that helps disguise it when you see the profile, you either see her going past my leg or me slapping my hands. Uh, but with our bodies in the way, you won't. Yay. So, next. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Okay, so here we go. Ah, I hit you! <laughs> I'm very bad. We're going to show you how to uh, control with clothing. Something like that. Joy okay. Rolls um, so this is a convenient move if you're trying to position someone in a new position in order to um, get a move in the correct direction. So you want to have like kind of open hands and then you want to grab the fabric of their shirt. You don't actually want to grab the skin because that's painful. Um, so you grab the clothing and then pull it up into like little fists. Um, don't wear clothing that is especially important to you or fragile and delicate. Um, you can kind of whip them around lightly as long as you know where they're going, or they can hold your wrists. That way, you might not, you're less likely to rip their clothing. <laughs> um, so, I would use this if, like, 
Eric and I are fighting this way. This is a really good view for the audience if they want to see our faces during a verbal confrontation. Um, but they don't want to see me punch in here because it's obviously not going to read. So I can use this as a controlling method of anger to whip him here. Now we're positioned correctly and I can punch him and it'll read better. Um, so use this to reposition people into whatever way you want or to drag them to various locations. Okay. Falling. It's a good thing that you can like, cut these. Okay. Falling. Uh, falling can hurt sometimes, but the point is to not hurt while you're falling. An easy way to do this is if you're falling to the side, which is a good way to fall. I'm going to get my siphon out of my pocket. You're going to take the direction in which you want to go, put that leg behind you, and then you're going to roll it onto your ankle, and you're going to bend your knee, and you're going to fall onto your butt and fall over. So that was my right foot. I will show you again. And I'm going to fall. Look at that. Seamless. Doesn't hurt a bit. I can get right back up. Ha! I'm spry. Now, uh, you can also do it with your left. That's a convenient way. Falling backwards, not the safest thing because you can't really see what's behind you. Falling forwards, uh, an easy way to do that is to choose a leg that you're more comfortable with. And you can even like run into it. You take that and you go into a lunge like that, and while you're there, you just roll off to one side, and you can make it look dramatic. I usually do my right foot. So it's like, oh, I was pushed. I caught myself with my leg before I actually hit the ground. So for Aslan defeating the White Witch, uh, the way that I was thinking we could do it was that he attacks her in the jugular, like a line would do. Um, I don't know if you're going to use a sword. If you are, then go for the sword. It's a lot different than what I'm going to show you. But the way that uh, I've done it before is uh, he sees her from afar and he comes abounding towards her. He is going to take her behind the neck and like the shoulder part with his hand and right here behind the back he's going to lunge forward and his head's going to kind of be in this area, like he was going for the jugular. She, With his mouth. Yeah. Nine, 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 nine. Biting. And a line. So it's going to go down, kind of like you're in a dance step. And she's going to come with, she's going to land on her hip buttocks region. <laughs> like really she was falling. That. So she would probably want to tuck her left leg underneath to fall, like we've shown. Uh, and the way we staged it, she kind of like took a few steps back and he tackled her and majority of the tackle was behind like a group of people and when they spread out she was dead and he was the victor. So I mean, <laughs> if you wanted to try it that way, feel free. If you want to experiment, see what it looks best, go for it. Uh, so take a few steps that way. I just like falling in cords. <laughs> We can put it this way. Okay. <laughs> okay, cool. So, okay, yeah, so it comes and behind and behind it. That was a hard fall. <laughs> no, it, it wasn't. For me. Oh, no, <laughs> sorry. I landed on my knees. <laughs> okay, cool. Let's do it fast. Fast it looks a lot smoother, I think. You're very close. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Then I eat her. <laughs> oh, God. No, it doesn't happen. Uh, do you want to do it backwards? Yeah. So, so you can see it from the side. Ooh, I can do a running start. See if you can do it. Here we go. Oh, are you okay? Yeah. That sounded painful. I should have felt better that way. Okay. <laughs> the other time. All I hear is like pounding on the spit. <laughs> okay. Ta da! Yay. Lizzie, now that you know all of this, you have great responsibilities, and we're not joking. Stage fighting can be dangerous um, if you don't do it right, so it's important to practice um, and to practice in a safe, not crazy environment. Um, so 
it can be a lot of fun and you can laugh, but make sure that you're serious in the moment. Mm -hmm. And also, because we've instructed you in different ways that you can like avoid being hurt, uh, in no way should you or any of your actors allow yourself or themselves to get hurt by doing this. Uh, you want to have a safe cast, obviously. You want to have a good performance. And uh, if any of your cast members try to compromise and say, no, just hit me, or you can hit me there, or, like, uh, I don't mind getting hit by a sword here or something like that, don't let that happen. There are ways to act around it, so there's no reason you should actually be hurt. And this is something that you should encourage your actors to know as they go out from your theater as well, because there are other theaters in the world that will actually do fighting. Um, so encourage your actors to remember the things that they've learned and to spread the word about safe stage fighting in the theater world. And with that being said, we have total confidence in you as a director and fight choreographer and everything. We're so excited uh, for you and uh, we hope that we get to see some highlights at least of your show. We can't wait to hear about it when we see you in the fall. So have a great time and peace and blessings, peace and blessings.